Okay, today I'm going to be doing a video on how to make soap and I'm going to be showing you one simple method which doesn't take a lot of materials and which doesn't require a scale. Uh, when you make soap, the, the process is where you mix lye with water and then you mix it with some kind of oil and when they're mixed together there's this process called saponification which makes it into soap uh, it's a chemical reaction and that's that's how you do it you need to have a very exact amount of lye for the amount of water and the amount of oil that you're mixing together and so most recipes have uh, instructions where they're giving the amounts of those things in weight and so you need to have an accurate scale to be able to make that um, but I have one recipe that I'm going to show you which you can use a measuring cup so we're using the same measurements that we did for uh, baking and so I've actually transferred the specific instruction or the specific amounts that I need onto this separate cup rather than the one that I use for baking it's always good to use materials specifically for making the soap that you don't use for other things just to make sure that you don't contaminate your food or the things that you're eating with. So just to give you an introduction, um, lye is a base and I'm not going to go into all the chemistry but in chemistry there are acids and there are bases and we've seen some acids before, lemon juice, vinegar, both of those are acids and then sodium bicarbonate is a base just like lye. But this one is a weak base, it doesn't harm you if you touch it, whereas lye is something that is very strong and so if you touch it with your bare skin it can burn you. And so when you are making soap you need to make sure that you use plenty of protective equipment. If you have safety glasses that's great, I don't so I'm going to have to use sunglasses which will be a little awkward inside but um, it's better than damaging your eyes. And then gloves and long sleeves I'll put on before I start working on it and then either shoes or socks to make sure you're protecting your feet rather than having bare feet. An uh, important consideration when using lye, there's a little rhyme that we use in chemistry to say that um, be a good boy, do as you oughta, pour, pour the acid into water and you have to say it with a British accent, you can't really say it with an American accent or it doesn't work. Uh, but if you think your life's too placid, pour the water into acid. So it's a very strong reaction when you mix them together, so you must make sure that you put the water into your container first and then add the lye after that. So we have to use the right kind of equipment also because lye can react with certain metals. So you need to make sure that you're using plastic containers or glass or stainless steel. So if you if you don't have if you don't know if your um, metallic containers are stainless steel, it's better to use glass or plastic. Um, so you need your oils, which we're going to go into, you need your lye, you need water, you want to make sure that your water isn't chlorinated, so you can use rainwater or um, water that's been filtered or bottled. And then you need to have some spoons for stirring things, you need to have a thermometer for measuring the temperature, uh, you need to have a whisk to stir the soap as it's for me and then you need some kind of a mold and the most simple thing you can get like boxes from boxed juice or milk and then you pour the soap mixture into there let it harden and then you can peel it off and cut your soap into the shape that you want uh, i'm going to show you the cold process method of making soap and in a cold process method you're actually you have to heat the oil so it's not completely cold but Basically what it is is that you don't have to have your soap mixture over a source of heat for the whole time. Um, a hot process method, you need something like a crock pot or you put your 
your uh, soap mixture into a low oven so that it's hot the whole time as it's forming. And I don't have a crock pot, and I'm guessing a lot of other people here in Uganda don't have a crock pot. Not to mention the fact that when the power goes out, then you're stuck. So you also need to have like an immersion hand blender to be able to blend your soap, which is also dependent on electricity, and many people don't have that. So this method, much easier, you don't need any special equipment. So with the cold process method, you heat your oils to a certain temperature, because when you mix the lye with water, the chemical reaction produces a lot of heat. So it's going to get really hot, then we let it cool until it reaches the temperature of our warmed, uh, warmed oils, then we mix them together, then you have to stir it with your whisk for about 15 minutes. So that's the most work that you have to do. You stir it for 15 minutes, and then every 15 minutes you come back and stir it again until it reaches what is called trace. And I'll show you what that looks like. It's where it starts to become a little bit thicker. And when you scoop some of it out and you know sprinkle it on the top of the soap, it kind of leaves a line that doesn't disappear right away. So then the other difference between hot process and cold process is that with hot process soap, as soon as it cools and hardens, you can use it right away. Whereas with the cold process, once it's hardened, you have to cut it out and then you have to put it out somewhere where there's um, good air circulation for a few weeks and then it's able, you're able to use it. Uh, if you use it right away, it's very harsh and it can be damaging to your skin. So those are the two methods. We're going to do the cold process. I'm not going to show an hours long video of me stirring the soap for 15 minutes, but I'll go through all the steps and you'll get to see how that goes. So we'll get started in just a minute. Here is an instructions for making the soap that we're going to be making. And so I just want you to be able to copy it down if you need to, um, but it's got the ingredients and remember we're using the American measuring cup and then you need to make sure you're very careful to clean everything well so that you don't get any chemical burns. So we use vinegar to clean off anything that has had lye on it. All right, this is the part of the video where you get to laugh at me for looking absolutely ridiculous and in which we mix our water and our lye. So I'm going to put my water, I need one and a half cups, so I'm going to measure it out here in my same measuring cup. It's kind of hard to see through some of the glasses. Don't really need the protective equipment for the water yet, so we'll go ahead and do that without glasses. So I'm going to do one cup. And then half a cup. And if you can see, I've put down some paper on my table here because I want to make sure that I don't get any of the lye on any surfaces that would be harmful later. So again, vinegar you use to wash anything off that's been in contact with the lye, and then you can wash it with soap. So we did our one and a half cups of water, and we put the lye in second. So I've got it in <clears throat> several layers, several layers of bags here to make sure that you don't come in contact with it. And there's even more. Okay, finally got that open. So we're going to very carefully measure out our exact half cup of lye and then very slowly pour it into the water there. So it's, it's a white powder, looks kind of like salt or uh, sugar.
Okay, now I'm going to pour it very slowly and carefully into the water and, and I'll stir it as I add it. And I want to make sure that I don't put my face over top of it um, so that fumes don't go onto my face, but most people probably wouldn't do that. But anyway, just to be safe, we slowly pour it in a little bit at a time. And again, remember it's a chemical reaction, so it's going to be giving off a lot of heat. So I don't want to just dump this whole thing all in at once. Just do a little bit at a time. Probably don't want to do this in like a super tiny room inside an enclosed building either. That might not be a good idea. I can feel the heat through my gloves. I don't know if you can see steam. I can see the steam coming out as well. So once I finish adding this, I'll bring the camera over and show you the temperature that it's at. Actually, it's probably beyond the temperature of this thermometer for even being able to measure. So I'm making sure I'm getting out everything that's in the cup. So before I use this cup for anything else, I'll rinse it out with vinegar, and then I will wash it with soap and water and I'll keep my gloves on while I'm washing it. All right, <clears throat> so there we go. Uh, quite hot, I'm gonna package my lye back up, make sure that it's in a safe place where it won't come in contact with anyone else, and then show you how the solution is very hot. All right, it's a little bit hard to see, but our temperature is right around 75 degrees Celsius right now. So this was quite cool water when it began. And so you can see that definitely the chemical reaction is quite heat producing. So we're going to let this start to cool and to go and start heating up our oil so that they reach the same temperature um, before we mix them together. With the oil, we're going to add one and one third cups of each one of these types, olive oil, sunflower oil, and coconut oil. Put them into this saucepan, and then we're going to heat them to 49 degrees Celsius. And then, once it's heated to that level, we'll let it start cooling, just like the lye and water mixture are cooling. And then once they reach a similar temperature, between 35 and 40 degrees, we'll be able to mix them together. So first, let me put these all into the saucepan. So one and a third cups. This way. That one's the coconut oil. Again with the olive oil, one and a third cups. So each recipe for soap is different and uses different oils and different amounts of lye and water, so you need to make sure that whatever one you're making, you follow the directions very carefully and <clears throat> do the exact measurements. All right, so we'll put this on the stove to start heating, and then we'll come back and show you when it's reached 49 degrees. So basically I've set up a double boiler system here. So there's 
boiling water in the bottom of that saucepan. And then I'm putting the one with the oils here. I've got my thermometer. So we want to heat it up to about 49 degrees. So right now it's about 35. So we're gonna go up to 49 degrees and then we'll take it off and let it start cooling. And then we'll try to get our two materials, the oil and then the lye plus water down to about 35 to 40 degrees and we'll mix them together. Let me just add that we don't want to put the oils directly on the fire, so that's why we're using the boiling water to heat them so that uh, they're not going to start on fire and cause massive problems. <laughs> so you've got to watch your oil really carefully because especially when it's 35 degrees inside it heats up really fast, so we're at about 50 degrees but it's close enough and then we'll go ahead and let it start cooling. Okay. Our oil is at 40 degrees, and our lye and water mixture is also at 40 degrees. So this is the point where we can mix them together. So I'm going to pour them into a stainless steel saucepan, and then I have to stir them for 15 minutes, and I'm not going to make you watch me for 15 minutes, I'll just get started and then turn off the video and come back later. First I'm pouring in the oil. Then I'm going to slowly pour in the lye solution and Ideally, I would want to be stirring while I pour it in, but I'll just pour in a little bit at a time and then stir because I only have one hand free. Alright, at this point I'm just going to stir for 15 minutes straight and then I'll stop stirring and um, come back and stir it a little bit every 15 minutes until it reaches that trace. And I'm going to show you once it reaches that and I'll let you know how long it took when I get to that point. But for now I'm just going to go ahead and keep stirring for 15 minutes. I have now stirred this for 15 minutes straight and I just want you to get an idea of how when I drip the uh, mixture on the surface it doesn't leave any trace, it doesn't leave any marks and so we're going to keep on waiting every 15 minutes I'll stir it again and it could be three or four hours even before it reaches trace so I'm not going to film all that but once we get to that point I'll show you how it looks. I just want to emphasize again washing those things that were touched by the lye with vinegar, rinsing them out with vinegar before you wash them with soap. Um, so be very careful not to touch the lye with your hands. And that is all until we come back for the soap being at trace. If you really want to torture yourself you can just stir it constantly for an hour, but I don't see any point in doing that. You might as well just do the every 15 minute stirring and that should be enough for eventually reaching trace. Okay, it's been almost two hours and I've been stirring every 15 minutes and at this point we've reached what is called trace. So you can see that when I uh, drizzle the soap mixture across the surface it kind of leaves a line. You can see those lines that are being left there. Um, yeah, so you want it to look like that. It doesn't need to be hard, you just need to be able to see lines left behind when you 
drizzle some soap across it. So at this point, we're going to pour into our molds, but if you wanted to add any color or something like an essential oil, um, you would put like 15 to 20 drops of an essential oil, or you could put some color, or you could put herbs or whatever you want to add into your soap. So I'm going to pour it into my uh, boxes. I'm going to do that and then I'll turn the camera back on because I want to be able to use both hands and not spill it everywhere. And then I'm going to put it just wrapped in some towels and stuff in my fireless cooker. <clears throat> and I'll leave it for about 36 hours. So it's late afternoon, so not tomorrow, but the next morning. Um, I'm going to take check them and see if they're hard enough to cut. So we'll let me fill them up first and then I'll show you how I'm going to pack them up. So I've poured the soap into these boxes and at this point um, this is not going to hurt you if you t if you touch it but it's going to be a really harsh soap so you don't want to yeah you don't need to pour vinegar into this saucepan to clean it but you should probably still wear gloves to wash it just so that you don't get a lot on your hands. So I'm just gonna set these in here so I've got the, the blankets in there to hold them firmly and then I'll put some other blankets around them just to keep them warm during this process of turning into soap um, so that they don't get cold. And then in 36 hours we'll check on them and see what has happened. So it has been 36 hours, it's time to see if our soap is hard enough to take out of these containers. It doesn't need to be as hard as a rock, just hard enough that it's not squishy or pouring anymore, so it's hardened. And at this point we can tear off our containers and cut the soap into the size pieces that we want. So let me go ahead and do that. And this is how they look after I peel off that carton. So unfortunately the carton isn't reusable, but uh, then we can cut them into the size and shape that we want. And so it should be soft enough to be able to cut with a knife. And you can um, slice it into different sizes. This is kind of hard to do with one hand. So I'm going to slice it up and then show you how it looks. And then remember with this cold process soap you can't use it right away you want to let it sit for four weeks to make sure that it's gentle enough for your skin and um, after that time you'll be able to use it okay so I've <clears throat> sliced up all of my soap and I set them out like this so once a week for the next four weeks just want to turn them a little bit to make sure that they're getting air all the way around them make sure you keep them in a dry, clean place so that they can cure completely. And then after the four weeks, you're good to go and you can go ahead and start using your soap.